So after learning about the little nightmare that is the LeBrant family's documentary, uh, I thought I deserved a little break and decided to turn to Hulu to watch a good old fashioned horror movie. Cause clearly Netflix ain't cutting it. But in my search for an original spooky movie, uh, this gem came up and I cannot lie to you. You cannot dangle original horror movie and Pierce Brosnan in front of me and expect me to not get interested. So I watched False Positive and uh, to put it bluntly, this might be the worst original horror movie on Hulu right now. And because I enjoy nothing more than talking about terrible horror movies, here we are. Uh, by the way, there is going to be spoilers throughout this because the plot is just so easy to figure out. And if you think I'm bullshitting, here we go. False Positive has three main characters in it. There's Lucy, who's the main character that's struggling to get pregnant, Adrian, Lucy's husband, and Dr. John Hindle, Adrian's former teacher and a big shot fertility doctor. With me saying that alone, you can probably predict where this is going, but if you haven't connected the dots yet, let me tell you a little bit more. Since Lucy and Adrian are struggling to get pregnant, they go to Dr. Hindle to get his extra special insemination treatment to get pregnant that way. Good work, son. This is powerful stuff. <laughs> Again, you already know where the movie's going with this. Cause horror plus fertility and artificial insemination can only go one way. Something's gotta be off with the baby batter. The baby gravy. The gabagoo, if you will. And no shocker, or else we wouldn't have a movie. Uh, Lucy does get pregnant. And she's pregnant with triplets, which is important because she is then advised to get a selective reduction. Dr. Hindle basically says this because she has two twin boys and a lone female, and that can complicate things due to the delicate nature of her pregnancy. And after much debate and discussion with Adrian, she decides to keep the girl and get rid of the boys. Again. You already know where the movie's going with this. There is a reason the sign back here says Comfridge. <laughs> and that's what's super unfortunate about this movie is that it's so predictable to the point where like the sheer obviousness of like everything gives the plot away. And I don't mean that the movie necessarily gives it away. I mean the circumstances that the movie brings forward are what give it away. The results can either be just normal or batshit crazy. And of course they're gonna choose the insane outcomes from everything. I mean, let's be honest, this is an A24 film. You can't get that logo without making the most insane batshit movie out there. Don't believe me? Watch X. It's arguably a better movie anyway. It's around this time that Lucy joins a group for expecting moms and gets close with a girl named Corgan. And the only reason she's important to the plot and I'm bringing her up is because she's used for an important little fuck you moment and that's it. Same with her coworkers that I failed to mention earlier. They are only here for fuck you moment and that's why I just didn't bring them up. Both of which we're gonna get to very shortly, but uh, first we have to get into the most consistent part of this film, the beginning of the ongoing theme of no one believes the pregnant woman, which is done as well as the movie's doing good of being unpredictable. Lucy goes through some shit during her pregnancy other than questioning if Hindle did something to the girl instead of the twin boys and if Adrian's in on it. Spoiler, the answer is yes to both, but I am sure you were aware of that already. Again, A24 practically stands for absurdity 24 seven. Throughout the movie, whenever Lucy has an issue, Hindle is very quick to say that it's something common and nothing to worry about literally at every turn. You're bleeding excessively after this reduction? Pfft. Normal. Here, going through more shit. Here's some pills with the antenatal depression. I probably said that wrong, but I am not a doctor, so fuck off. <laughs> and of course, because we cannot have one good male character in this movie, Adrian agrees and practically sucks Hindle off. I meant figuratively, but that is a thing she hallucinates. We'll get into those shortly. We have more fuckery to deal with and we have to go one at a time and I am already getting ahead of myself. I understand that this is definitely trying to be a criticism of how people who are pregnant's worries and concerns are usually brushed under the rug and not taken super seriously, but having Adrian just go with it, it's a questionable choice in my opinion. Because with the pregnancy in mind and him being in cahoots with Hindle and all that, you'd think he'd at least be concerned too. Like aside from being a supportive husband or trying to at least seem like that, your little plan with Hindle is clearly important to you. So like like excessive bleeding and the woman carrying that pregnancy should like matter a little bit more to you than the implicitly trusting old James Bond factor, who in his own right and in his defense was somewhat of a gynecologist himself. It's around this point where Lucy's life also does a full 180 and all those fuck you moments happen like back to back. They're also somewhat tied into some dream or hallucination type shit, so bear with me for a second. Lucy's job decided to give her a big project that she started and got approved at the beginning of the movie, basically her busting her ass and making her think she's gonna have it all the kids, the family, the job, yada, yada, yada. And they decide to give that to one of her male coworkers because she's pregnant and needs to focus on the baby. Well, this pisses her off, so she goes and gets Adrian food in which she learns she apparently already did, I guess. We don't see her do that and the movie never like confirms it or anything, but it doubles down with the fucky hallucinations, so 
I kind of trust Adrian. You'll see why, trust me, it gets worse. It's around this point she then finds a safe in Adrian's office and finds a file on her in it, giving it to Corgan who says that she'll have her husband who's a lawyer look at it. But surprise, surprise, because we can't have anything good here. Lucy learns at her baby shower where she hallucinates blood on a copy of Peter Pan that Corgan gave the file back to Adrian because she's worried about her and is also associated with Hindle because she's also seeing him. Shocker, I know, it's a movie where the main character just constantly gets fucked with. It's just so unique, guys. And with that happening, Lucy starts having contractions and goes to Grace Singleton to have her baby. You need to go to the ER. Did, did I not mention anything about Grace? That's because she too is forgettable and is only here for a complicated fuck you moment. I will give it credit, it is a little bit more complicated than the other two. Grace is basically a midwife who Lucy sees as more spiritual and natural than Hindle and opts to see her instead of Hindle, much to Adrian's annoyance and dismay. This is what, you saw a post and now you're, you're, you're basing our entire baby's life on a fucking Instagram trend? <laughs> <laughs> but, Grace cannot handle Lucy's birth because, shocker, in a big old twisty twist, Lucy delivers a boy and is about to have another and gets taken to Hindle's to deliver the final boy and the reduced female. I'm just as shocked as you guys are. Nobody could have possibly seen this coming. Look at this thumbnail. It's proof that I was shocked by this. We see Lucy super zoned out and just not having the whole having boys thing. Personally, I thought she was gonna pull an Andrea Yates, but the movie somehow decides to hop, skip, and jump over that actual horror story. One I would rather see with this movie than anything else shown so far. And goes to talk to Grace about it, where we learn that she dreamed to hallucinated. I don't know. But her brain did something to make Grace's office go from looking like this to this. Grace just calls Lucy out on her shit in the most blunt way anyone has talked to her in this movie at this point, saying, I am not your mystical negress, Lucy. I don't even know what to do with myself be better. Yeah, so Lucy goes and does that, and that's all Grace's character was useful for. You know, the movie you're watching is something else when the majority of people are only in here for one thing, and that's it. Lucy goes to Hindle's where she basically learns him and Adrian are now gonna be working together, and unhappy with that answer, she sneaks into the lab she's eyed multiple times in this movie, and finds her placenta with the reduced female fetus and a ton of Hindle's nut juice. And I am not talking about almond milk. Basically, if you couldn't predict it yourself, Hindle is inseminating everyone, and specifically specifically Lucy in this case, with his own baby gravy because he views his nut as superior and wants to just keep having boys to spread his genes. Very shocking, couldn't believe it, such horror, 10 out of 10. Hindle, of course, doesn't want Lucy to halt the baby gravy train and tries to drug her, but she doesn't go down without a fight, restraining him, drugging her stone, and destroying the cum fridge and leaving with her reduced fetus. Like I said, this was gonna be important, and I'll take any excuse to write cum fridge on a whiteboard for a video. <laughs> now, if they ended the movie here, it would not be great, but it would be a whole hell of a lot better than the next bit I have to tell you about. Lucy imagines herself releasing the boys out of the window, floating like the kids in Peter Pan, because she's been obsessed with that this whole fucking movie, but it really does not play an important role at all, so here we are. I didn't talk about it, cope, seethe, and cry about it. She kicks Adrian out with the twins and then tries to feed the fetus and imagines, hallucinates, daydreams, pick your fucking poison at this point, that it starts to suckle, because we need a fucky ending for a fucky movie. Now, I like movies that tackle real life shit, especially in a horror sense. I think that they're interesting, and if they're done well, they can be pretty compelling, actually. False Positive is not one of those movies. False Positive is one of those movies that throws every fucky thing they can at you because they think that'll be so unique and just so jaw-droppingly shocking that you'll have to like it. Because good movies are movies that make you look like the fucking shocked emoji, I guess. And to their credit, maybe they wanted to do a little bit of an unreliable narrator bit, but did anybody stop them and say, we could just draw the line with her leaving with the fetus. Like, it'll save the viewers some brain cells, guys, come on. Like I said, they're also probably trying to play into the no one believes pregnant women's concerns, again, but you don't have to do shit like this. She thought that dead fetus was suckling on a titty, and that a woman's office was spiritual based on whatever the fuck she conjured in her head. Based on this, I'm just saying, maybe we shouldn't take pregnant women seriously. <laughs> The pregnant women have lost their rights because of this movie, sorry to break it to you. All jokes aside, I think the themes in this horror movie make for a very compelling movie, but I think it all mishmashed together just doesn't work. A movie on how horrific doctors can be the pregnant woman would have been wonderful, especially with the wrongful insemination bit, considering that happens a scarily decent amount in real life. Talking about how people don't believe those who are pregnant and worried could have also made for a great horror movie on its own too. Literally, if they took one or two things and didn't just cluster everything together, this could have been really good, but they just clustered it all together. And thought it would be good, which 
it's not. What I'm saying here is basically this. False Positive is a really bad horror movie based on scary subjects. Take the scary subjects out, pick and choose one, maybe two, and make a new movie, and honestly, you can make a genuinely decent film. I mean, the potential is there, these are scary subjects, you just gotta have to isolate them and pick and choose. Pregnancy can be very horrifying, so the potential is there, you just don't need to mishmash it all together for one film. Plus, there's already plenty of good horror films with pregnancy, like, involved in it, so it is very clearly able to be done. False Positive is just definitely not one of them. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this very chaotic video on False Positive. Like I said, definitely not a good movie, but you could take aspects of it to make a better movie. There's stuff that can be saved, though, like the female fetus. That thing is fucking gone. I know this was definitely short, but I really just wanted to have kind of fun with the video, especially because I've been feeling very low motivation and just exhausted recently. And I love talking about shitty horror movies. It's fun. I had a couple drinks, made it even funner. So enjoy this as I get ready to prepare myself to ingest a terrible BuzzFeed bullshit. And until then, don't trust movies with old James Bond actors in them as much as you may love them. But until the next video, I will see you guys later. Bye.